Hey guys, today I am going to show you off a set that I have been collecting since I was a kid. Some of this collection comes when I was only five or six years old. There was a flea market where I lived in Pennsylvania and that flea market had alpha, beta, and had legends. I always was very attracted to legends. I don't know why. I guess, you know, EDH Commander was always kind of attractive even if it didn't exist. And I try to collect as much of this stuff as I can and as good of a condition as I can. So I'm always trying to replace in and out, in and out. And Legends itself is one of the harder sets to collect. Obviously, it's very expensive. So whenever I see a really good Legends card, I will pay above the buy list. Uh, my current buy list right now is I will match any buy, any buy list from my reputable source. Understand that, that that means Card Kingdom, that means Cool Stuff Inc., that means Dave and Adams, that means anyone who, like, I Star City Games, Channel Fireball, which is not even, I might even do TCG Player, although I've, I've overpaid on that website plenty. My, my point is kind of simple here is that I do think that in all reality, you have to overpay for them just to get them. And there's very few cards I can say that about, especially in modern magic. And as people learn about more of this um, type of magic, they will appreciate. What I'm saying is I believe this is very, very underappreciated Magic the Gathering. That the amount of people who know about this type of stuff, who have access to it is quite limited. And because it is quite limited, I think it does have collectible value to it. And this has been one of the most fun sets for me to collect. It reminds me of my childhood. It reminds me of my friends from elementary, middle school, and high school. I'm so glad I have this type of collection. It really does make me proud to be a Magic player looking at it. And I do look at it from time to time with you guys. Yeah, this I know that's not a Legends card, but you kind of get it. Caracas, a playset of Caracas, right? Because why not? Legendary Land. People don't get it. The rules were very different when I was a kid. No one really played by their official magic rules. We had our own rules to play by. And Orbog, I mean, these are pretty famous areas, right? Of Magic the Gathering. Cathedra of Sarah, and then Pendlehaven, which is a really fascinating card. Yeah, when you collect something that is actually old, actually limited, you're going to find out that there is, it's a slow, slow process. It's not like today where you could fill up your whole EDH stack, or if you wanted to, you could go and teach EDH play Card Kingdom. You know, order the whole set. They'll sell you the whole set. There's not even that many people with, like, cards. So to get multiple cards in one envelope is actually kind of an accomplishment. Oh, and then we get to the multi-color. So I have a story here. My local game store used to have a bunch of these cards. I, I don't know exactly why they had so many of them. Uh, I do remember this card in particular and then Stag. And they were a dollar a piece. This was must have been back in when Pokemon hype was happening. It was not like Urza Saga. Yeah, Urza Saga. A lot of these legend cards... Great condition, a dollar a piece, and the dollar bulk bin. And that might be surprising given the price today, but vintage was always not like the collectability of Magic wasn't very high. It was always about the playability of the game. So no one thought that these older cards, well, at least for me as a kid, I didn't think that these older cards really had much value. But it was nice to look at them, and they were much weaker than, I guess, like the current cards that were being made. This is one of the most infamous cards. But any of these legends, you know, the, and you might be like, oh, why do you have like doubles? It's because I want to trade. Another interesting part about having uh, these cards is to get other cards. People sometimes don't want cash. They don't want to. You, they don't want cash. They want trade. And what do they want you to trade? They want you to trade something in the similar set. Great cards. Uh, greed, Hellfire. I remember Hellfire being really, really tough to get. Uh, very glad to get Hellfire. Mo Demon is uh, he's the MVP 
as my neighbors just rev up their engines for no reason. I, I, I swear, like, it's so loud here that, like, you can never actually hellfire our house caretaker, one of the most OP cards. I remember having a Chronicle version of it and saying, you know what, I, what I really need is I need the original version. Nothing beats original Legends. It's just something that is so fun to collect uh, and something that I, I, just so many memories in this stuff, like Acid Rain. And we used to play with these cards. You know, we used to play with these cards. I'm, I'm not kidding. With no sleeves, no play mat. You just, so, and you didn't even have a deck box. I mean, like people just didn't make that type of stuff. What you would have is you would have like a sandwich bag and you would put your cards in the sandwich bag. That's like unheard of today. Like imagine people playing with their most valuable cards in a sandwich bag. People would, I mean, they would go berserk online, right? But anyway, um, th those are the legends in blue. Let's see, legends in green. This one is a rare. It always, it's always kind of surprising what's a rare and what's uncommon in this set. You would never think, oh, that's an uncommon. Oh, that's a rare. Um, you know, this one I think is kind of pricey. And the condition matters a ton. So I've been upgrading, which with, in case you don't know what it means, it means that like, oh, I have one of these cards and I have another card. Let's say I have a Living Plains and it's not in good condition. And then I see one that is in better condition online. You buy the one that is in better condition. It, it's a very expensive, very tedious. So I actually probably have multiple copies of every card in this binder just in like another binder where this is the best condition I have. You can see that it's very crispy, right? Um, I like better conditions because I do feel like in the long term, the conditions will never get better. So a card will never go from a, a moderate play to a light play. A card will never go from a light play to a near mint, but can go down from a near mint to a light play. Therefore, there is some urgency in getting the best version of the copy so I'm, I'm speaking a lot of stuff I normally don't tell people because it, obviously it's not good for me to tell people because now I have competitors. Um, we're doing that for Weiss too. We're, we're collecting a giant Weiss set. Probably going to dump 30K into it and within the next month. And the condition never get... You want to always buy the best condition you can get even if it costs more money because that's the... The conditioning will never get better on the cards. There will never be more near mint cards but I promise you there could be more EX cards, like excellent cards, or let's call it light play cards because their near, near, near mint cards could be downgraded into the light play, but the light play is probably not going to be upgraded the other way. I used to play this a ton, the Killer Bees, the Sylvan Forest. I had to get that. I had to get that. You know, I had to get that one. And again, you might be like, why do you have so many copies of the same card? It's because... It's Sometimes money cannot get you what you want. Sometimes a person selling the cards or, or trading, they want to trade and they want to trade for equal value. And they probably, the people who have legends, they're not going to let it go unless it is for other legends. And you're going to find that for, you know, a lot of these random sets, right? The Firestorm Phoenix, love that card, <laughs> Manticore. The artwork also fantastic. I uh, love it. Uh, Land's Edge. No idea that was an expensive card, but it, some of these cards will blow your mind when you Google how expensive they are. It blew my mind. I was like, what? You know, Gravity Spear. I actually opened Legends when I was a kid, so I still have the cards. And I was like, oh, man, like this can't be worth anything. I think it was, like, it was in my bulk. And then I was like, wow, okay, it's worth a ton. Do I have another Gravity Spear? No, I must have traded that one away. No, I do have another one. Okay, I do have another one. I found one in bulk and then I traded for another one. I thought I traded away. But yeah, again, um, wow. Just some of the most beautiful, the Einstein, Presence of the Master. If you can get your hands on a really nice copy of this stuff, I promise you there is going to be value in the future. Just the print run on Legends compared to today you might as well make all these cards serial out of 250, right? Because there's probably 250 near mint copies in the world for some of these cards. And people played with them. There's land tax and a uh, cleanse. Oh, no, uh, this one's one of the most beautiful cards. I, I probably would buy more into that one because it is. I have a ton of copies, but that's the minty copy and people don't really want to trade for a common. 
And that's my Legends card, Divine. This is my, I mean, it's a very expensive set to collect. And having to switch out for better conditions, also very expensive. Anyway, guys.